way or in another. Yet man does not perceive it in a dream, in a vision of the night, when deep sleep falls upon men while slumbering on their beds. Then he opens their ears, then he opens the ears of men and seals their instruction in order to turn man from his deed and conceal pride from man. He keeps back his soul from the pit and his life from perishing by the sword. In other words, God will give you visions and God will give you dreams to keep you from perishing, to keep you from being struck down, to keep you from going in the wrong direction, to keep you from being hemmed up or turned down or beat up or broken up. And so he says, I'm going to give you a vision. Now the title of the sermon is, Where There Is No Vision, There My People Perish. Here Job says, the reason God gives you a vision is so that you won't perish. Yeah. Yeah. You won't perish. If we have anything here today, church, the one goal that we have, we may not like the same football teams, we may not like the same foods, we may not like the same styles, we may not like the same music, but if there's one thing that we have in common here today is we have a vision. We have a vision. We have something bigger and greater. It's not just about you. It's not just about me. But if you and I and us get together, then we can see this vision come to pass. Can you say amen? amen. The one thing we want is to not perish. We don't want to perish. We have a vision. We may not have our own building. We may, but we're babies. We're only five and a half years old. Give me a decade. Give me 20 years. Give me 40 years. And let's see what God does. We're, we're, we are going up against organizations. We are going up against an organized religion that has been established for hundreds of years. And now we're just trying to start off. We're just trying to, to come out. But we're not looking at the, what we don't have. And we're looking at what that we do have. And we have a vision. God has given us a vision to keep us from perishing. The word vision means divine revelation. We have a revelation, not interpretation. Not interpretation. I don't ever, ever want you to say this is my interpretation of the Bible. You don't have the right to interpretation. You only have the right to revelation. That God has given me a revelation. God has given me a revelation of what he's trying to say. God has given me a revelation of what he's trying to do. And God has given me a revelation of what my vision is. So first you get the vision. Then you get the revelation. You can never, you can never, uh, uh, you can never bring to pass the vision unless you have a revelation. The other night I had a dream. I had a dream. I was laying there. I had a dream. I had a dream that I moved into a Chinese man's house. I don't even like Chinese food. I moved into a Chinese man's house. It was beautiful. Maybe he was Japanese. He might have been Korean. Okay, he was Asian. So I moved into an Asian man's house. Beautiful home, three-story home. He had waterfalls inside of his house, and he had fireplaces and, and fish tanks. And we moved in there, and my whole family was there. And I got a big family. You know, Darren's got two kids, and Marissa's got a kid. She's got a husband now, and Alyssa and Justin Bieber posted. We were all up inside of the house. And, and, and I kept thinking to myself, when this man gets home, he's going to kick us out. He's going to kick us out. He's going to kick us out. So the man comes into the house, and, and, and the man comes into the house, and, and he says, what are you doing here? And I said, we were just leaving. <laughs> I, go, I go, we were just admiring your house. Sir. We have a beautiful house. He goes, I'll tell you what. He says, I'm getting evicted. And they are kicking me out. He goes, and you can have this house until they tear it down. I said, wow. I said, thank you. Maybe they'll even let you buy it. I was like, oh, my gosh, that's amazing. And he left. He took his two little kids and, and his wife, and he left. And as he walked out the door, I noticed that the back door was on fire. I said, oh, the house is on fire. So I told the kids, come on, get out, get out. The house is on fire. But they go, but Dad, look at all these beautiful things like fish tanks and, 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 and marble carvings and, 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 and pictures of Justin Bieber. We need to get all of these beautiful things, and we need to take them out of the house. And I said, we don't have time. The house is burning. So we got out of the house. And I knew, that, I knew that we had to get out of the city because as soon as I stepped out of the house, I noticed that the whole city was on fire. That I, I could feel the flames on my face. I could see the fire reaching heaven. I can't say it was a volcano. I just knew that it was on fire. We had to leave the city. So I gathered up all my crews to my vehicle, and I told Misty, should we head east or should we head west? And I said, let's head east. So we started heading east. We got to east, and all of a sudden there was an earthquake, and I had to get out of the car because there were these big holes in the in the in the, in the on the asphalt. And I said, "Let's get out." So we got out, and we were standing by a fence, and all of a sudden I saw a big tidal wave coming over the mountain. And I 
say, grab on, kids, grab on to this fence so that we don't throw it away. And the, 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 the flood or the, the tidal wave just over consumed my family. And I can see, I remember my, my granddaughter, Nevea, holding her breath like that. And we were underwater, and I said, oh, my God, if the fire doesn't kill us, the water will. And, and we were underwater. My whole family was underwater. And just like that, the water went down, and we were saved. We were out of the water. We were out of the water. Now, when I woke up, I had no idea what that meant. I had no idea what that was. But then I got up, and I said, I went to my, my dad. He's a good interpreter of dreams. And I said, you know, interpret this vision for me. Interpret this dream for me. And he began to interpret it. So it's what I got first was the vision, and then second, I got the revelation. So it's what I want to let you to understand that today we know what the vision is, but you need to get revelation on this so that we can bring it into action. You need to get a hold of the revelation, and you have to agree to be a brick of foundation. You have to be somebody willing to start something out of nothing. You have to be willing to say, you know what, I'm going to be here. I'm going for the long haul. I'm going, this isn't going to fail, although it may look like we're failing. It may look like we go to the left. It may look like we go to the right, but I'm here for the long haul because I want to be a part of something great, not today, not tomorrow, but a decade from now, and two decades from now, and a century from now. I want to be a part of something that long after we're gone, they said, remember when they started the work. Remember when they got the vision and they got the revelation. Can you say amen? amen. The word perish means to be destroyed violently. Without vision, my people perish. Without vision, which is divine revelation. So without revelation, first you need the vision, then you need the revelation. But it says, if you don't have those things, you will perish. And it says to be destroyed violently. That's a big word. That's a big word. I've read the word destroyed uh, several times in the Bible. There's another verse that says, uh, due to lack of knowledge, uh, my people will be destroyed. And, 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 you know, and, and God will destroy. And God's going to come and destroy. And it will destroy the enemy. It's what it means. The word destroy is to be destroyed or perish means to be destroyed violently. Or my people perish for lack of knowledge. I'm sorry. My people perish for lack of knowledge. And the word perish means to be destroyed violently. So then the enemy is coming at us, and he is trying to cause us to perish. But how can he cause us to perish? He will attack you through the vision. He will attack you through the vision. He will attack you at the very basis, at the very beginning, at the very infancy, at the very impregnation. And he will try at the very, very core to destroy you at your vision. That will be, he'll give you a building, but he'll give you nobody to fit that building. He'll give you people, but he'll give you no building. And it's what you do when you begin to say, oh, man, and the enemy will attack you in that way because if he can keep you out of the infancy, if he can keep you from delivering the pregnancy, if he can keep you from putting into action the revelation, then he's won. But I came here today. I want to just reassure you. I want to just reinforce. I want to just gather you up again and have a quick team meeting. I just well, I remember there was a guy, he was the he was the, the manager of King Supers. He was head over the warehouse. He was head over the, the, the grocery stores. He was head over the, uh, the, the, the dry warehouse and the, the coal warehouse. He was one man. And every once in a while that one man would come and say, we need to have a meeting. He says, listen here, I know you work in the grocery warehouse, but I want to encourage you to shop at King Supers. I don't want to ever see you shopping at another store than King Supers because King Supers pays your paycheck. And because the average family spends at least $23,000 a year on groceries, you need to invest in your future by shopping at King Supers, even though you work here at the warehouse. And he, he used to get us fired. He used to make me excited, like, yes, after I'm done pulling orders for King Supers, I'm going to go shopping at King Supers. Because I believed in the vision. Uh, he pumped me up for the vision. He just he said, he goes, I want to reinforce the fact that King Supers is going nowhere. We're going to be here long after we, you, uh, you retire. We're going to be here to hire your children. And we're going to be here to hire your children's children. And all because you work here and you shop here. And because you do that and you believe in the vision and you get revelation and you put it into action, we're going to be here forever. Can you say amen? Amen. So I want, I want to get you excited. I want to come and reinforce to you the fact that I had a vision and that I got a 
revelation and with your help we can put it into action and we can really change the circumstance. We can really change the city. We can really change the direction. We can really change what's happening in our world. Not only do they believe that the Antichrist has been born. Not only do they believe that they're getting ready to release the mark of the beast. Not only do they believe that some of these countries like Syria and Iran have nuclear weapons. Not only do they believe that the terrorists can attack us on our own soil at any minute. But I believe that the greatest revival the world has ever seen is getting ready to come forth. So I ain't afraid of disease. I ain't afraid of bombs. I ain't afraid of countries. Because I have a vision. Can you say it? Never be destroyed violently because we have.